Hi, so we're having a bit of wind, which is great. So it's time for me to leave my efforts at welding and go out and set up the generator and see what it does. Now, I do have the added advantage of this thing. It's a little wind speed meter that I got hold of, or an anemometer, if that's pronounced correctly. So I get some idea of what the wind speed is going through the turbine. Okay, I think that was awesome. I also think it's not going to please very many people because there were no meter readings. But we did get some idea of wind speed and we could see that it was lighting up those lights. And you have to remember those lights are 30 volts at 700 milliamps. It won't have been doing that, but it will have been doing 28, 30 volts. And it's probably doing somewhere around about 50, 100 milliamps. That's not really the point. The point is it works in the wind. Now, I can tell you it began turning at 1.8 metres per second, and that was to overcome its own inertia. It would continue turning to about 0.9 metres a second is when it would actually stop. So it's actually working in very low wind speeds. Now, it begins to light those lights at the very dim part of the light at about 2 metres per second. So once the wind speed gets up to 2 metres per second, it starts to output. Now, if you are watching, you'll see that the output steadily increased to a certain point when it shot up. Now, it did rain, so some of those circuits were a bit dicky, but it shot up in terms of its light output, and that tended to be sort of around about the 4 metres per second mark. Now, where I had that thing positioned, and you saw me check around the edge, we actually got no more than 5 metres a second wind going through that. And that's just because of things at ground level. I mean, it's on a trolley jack in a car park, OK? So... It isn't going to do great stuff, but it is, I think, pretty convincing for what it can actually do, or rather, the potential that it actually has. Because what we're looking at, remember, is a, a different way of looking at vertical uh, wind turbines, vertical axis wind turbines. Now, this idea of magnets around the rim isn't my idea. It's an old idea, actually, and it comes from Honeywell. Honeywell tried with horizontal axis wind turbines to put the magnets around the tip of the blade. They created a big shroud and put the magnets on there. And they had a, a lot of problems. I mean, that product was on the market. I think it was for about a year or two before it was withdrawn. Now, it's withdrawn. Um, they didn't say why. So it could have been mechanical problems. It could have been just no interest. It could have been that the output figures weren't actually what you would achieve. So there could be a whole load of reasons. But they did try it and they weren't very successful. Now I think it's because horizontal axial wind turbines um, aren't suited to uh, magnets at the rim, where of course vertical are entirely suited to magnets at the rim. So I think one thing that it's showing is that this um, idea of low torque, high speed by placing magnets at the exterior of a circle is an awesome idea. It's particularly appropriate to um, vertical axis wind turbines and not pro appropriate to horizontal axis wind turbines. Now, 
That might be a disappointment to some folks, but like I say, I think VAWTs are much more appropriate to envir uh, urban environments where we have wind that is coming from all directions, whereas uh, the HAWAT are much more appropriate to things like offshore wind farms. I think it's a mistake to take offshore wind farm technology and translate it to the urban environment. I think that's why people are very disappointed with the wind turbines they've got, because they just can't output what it is they're supposed to output. To me, these experiments are showing the promise of VAWTs. If the VAWT abandons the central axis generator that HAWT uses and adapts to this rim thing, I think that would be the way forward. And I think the experiments are indicating that is really quite true, to be honest. So... The next stage is obviously, is we've tested it in a real wind, we know what the wind speed is and we have a, a guide to the output. Clearly we need some numbers, okay, we do need to put some meters on that, some loads and get some numbers. Now tomorrow we're supposed to have quite a windy day during the day, I've waited all day for the wind to pick up. It just so happens that it gets darker about half four and the, the wind picked up now. It's now ten past seven at night and this is when the wind picked up and I, I'm <laughs> desperate to get this thing done because it's really exciting. So I wheel down the car park and you have to put up with the fact that it's a bit dark. Um, tomorrow, hopefully, with a little bit of wind, we'll get some meters on it and we can get some readings from it. Still collecting coils. You might have noticed there's only four coils on there and I'm still collecting coils. Uh, and I still want to get this onto my roof. Anyway, I thought I'd update you and how it actually does in a real wind. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.